For decades, these carved wooden images are what most people, non-African, have seen and think of when they think of African art. While these images are authentic African art or representations of African culture, they tell a partial story, a narrative full of primitive, uncivilized people living in a backward continent, not of an African continent that has developed over the century since those wooden arts were created and is now producing some of the world's best modern and contemporary artwork. Welcome to Women and Things. I am Kemi Oshu Koya. There is a new acknowledgement that is taking place in the world about African and people of African being long overlooked by the rest of the world and often seen as uncultural and unsophisticated by most standards. Those narrow perspectives lately have begun to shape thanks to a new generation of Africans living on the continent and in the diaspora who refuse to be bought into any stereotype and have chosen instead to shuttle between the entire world, bringing along their cultural heritage while also embracing new experiences. This new generation of Africans are using the world as their muse to tell, write, paint a new canvas and narrative of modern day Africa and Africans. The World Cultural Institution and Museums, had gallery, had collectors, and auction houses seem to have taken notice to and are now embracing this new narrative into their art collection in order to provide a more accurate contemporary context and narrative about Africa and its people. Championing and carving modern day and contemporary African art narratives are artists like Mahoud Saeed, British Nigerian Yinka Shoni Bare, Ben Nguawu, Malik Sadibi, Ibrahim El Anasu, and Kenya born Wange Shimotu. Just a few examples of artists breaking down barriers, using their uncommon duality as a study to explore, demystify, as well as evoke thoughtful conversation about African historical contents and modern day representation. Thoughtful conversation on what Museum Goa will be having later this fall when the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York unveil and present commissioned artwork from Kenya born artist Wange Shimutu as his inaugural facade installation in September, which is part of the Museum Contemporary Art New Projects. Working on some other major projects for contemporary art here on, at the Met Fifth Avenue, and that's especially true for a couple of locations here in at the building, for the facade, for the Great Hall, and for the Lehman Wing. For the facade, as you might have already heard, we, we have inaugurated an annual sculpture commission that will take place at the facade of the Met every fall, um, and. The first artist who we've selected for that is Van Gichimutu. Uh, Van Gichimutu is probably known to many of you. She's an outstanding artist, very well known also for her collages, for her fantastic otherworldly narratives. She currently has major work of hers at the Whitney Biennial. Uh, she was born in Nairobi, has studios there as well as here in Brooklyn. And it will be the first ever installation on the Met's facade. And as you might have noticed, there are also in dance presentation, uh, and ever since the early 20th century, the Met's facade has these sculpture niches, but they were left empty ever since. And so we, we felt, let's activate these uh, niches and create an annual uh, sculpture commission there. Mutu's work in, in three dimensions really often references African folk tales and also the sculptural tradition that's both informed Africa as well as from Europe. Um, you see here to the left uh, her sculpture Bronze Woman from 2017 and to the right some early sketches of hers for her upcoming commission which basically also reference uh, the Met's collection and use the Red Met's collection as a point of inspiration. Mangeji's work really often reflects topics such as racism, sexism, politics, ecology and it certainly also radiates around 
question of female empowerment. And you will see some of that certainly in past cultures. I spoke to the museum director shortly after the announcement to find out why it was important for the museum to have a contemporary African art in their collection. So tell me, why was it important for you to, why did you choose her and why was it important for you to include her in the exhibition, in the upcoming right. exhibition? This will be the inauguration for our major sculptural commission at the Met. Uh, and we followed Bangi Chimutu's work for a long time. Uh, we felt she is really not only an outstanding artist, but also someone who really works with her own um, nationality, with her own uh, uh, coming from Nairobi and being uh, both in Nairobi and in, in New York, but actually also uh, being very informed about our uh, collection, our European uh, collection as well as our African art collection. So um, Van uh, sculptural practice is uh, so outstanding and really um, uh, gives the, the Met uh, another opportunity to uh, start what is certainly uh, an important uh, program uh, for the Met and uh, will will be uh, a major manifestation of contemporary artistic practice uh, right at the facade of the Met. So is this sort of like a new partnership or a new collaboration with African artists? I, as you can tell, Many museums around the U.S., around the right. world, are including a lot of African artists. Right. Is this sort of like part of the collaboration? It, it is not a kind of a, a clear-cut collaboration to say we want to work with African artists. Uh, it is something that where we really believed in Bangechi Mutu's work as an outstanding artistic practice. Uh, but we all we were also very interested in. Uh, to see what informs her work, uh, what she expresses in her work, uh, how Which she embraces. Uh, well, it is on the one hand uh, based on, I would say, a certain tradition of both, as I said, maybe African folk tales, a certain yeah. idea of uh, female liberation, a, a certain idea even of uh, addressing uh, uh, an African heritage in a, in a certain way. And so um, that's something that we got very interested in, and it's something that we felt uh, would be an important to manifest here at the Met. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mutu, who currently lives in New York City, is one of the most prolific African artists in the diaspora and is known for a hat that depict female in complex and provocative hybrid forms as part human, part anima a mystic figure whose unique beauty explores the complexity of femininity. Addressing our heritage is important to investing in a sustainable future, to keep our tradition alive. In addition to showing Mutsu's collection, the museum is also embarking on a new renovation project of East Africa, Oceania, and the American Gallery that will best highlight the art collection in the galleries. We are just embarking on a major renovation project for the arts of Oceania, Africa, and the ancient Americas, and that should be done in 2023. This is on the south end of the building in the Rockefeller Wing. I'm sure all of you are familiar with this space. There are two components to this project. One is to reinstall these mag magnificent collections in ways that is consistent with our current thinking about how, how best to present this material, the work of scholarship that is consistent with the evolution of our thinking about this work, therefore to maintain currency in the scholarly uh, and museum world. But also there's an infrastructure component. This wing consists of, the Rockefeller wing has a beautiful glass curtain wall onto Central Park on the south side that has not been functional for a very long time because it allows in too much light and the infrastructure component of the project has effectively failed. So we must replace that the curtain wall and at the same time we want to reinstall and renovate these galleries and do something magnificent and important and it will look a little bit like this concept um, that you see here on the screen. So we're very excited about that work, which is already underway. Speaking of art and renovation, they say hindsight is 2020. Sometimes history repeats itself, giving us the opportunity to demystify historical content so we can juxtapose and examine current events in our modern day societies. Juxtaposing and examining the past and the present are not only important to our connecting the dots in our history 
it can help liberators to explore, discover, and manifest to the world who we truly are. Acknowledging each other not only can help manifest who we are, it can help us become a better person, a better society, a better nation, and a better world. That's our show for this week. Keep an open mind, get involved in your community, and encourage one another. I am Camille Shukoya. I hope you enjoy our show and we will watch us again. Thank you.